Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Tonight's lecture will deal with the uh, importance of patience and also the negative results of impatience. So, how, uh, what, first let's define what is uh, impatience, the negative trait. So, Webster says basically not willing to wait for something or someone. So, how do we see the negative uh, results of impatience in history? And the truth, it's right out of the box. Adam was created, and he was told not to eat from the tree of knowledge. And according to Kabbalah, he only had to wait three hours. Had he awaited till Shabbos, uh, based on the opinion that the tree of knowledge was a grape, he would have squeezed the grape, made wine, made kiddush, and even that tree would have been permitted for him to partake of. Impatience. What was the result? It brought death to all of mankind. Second time is when the, the Jews received the Torah on Mount Sinai. Moshe went up to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And he said he'd be back after, after the 40 days. They miscalculated. They thought he was late. And because of him being late, they made the golden calf. The end result of that, again, at the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, God forgave the world for all of its sins, going all the way back to Adam, to first man. And basically, the Jews were immortal. And because they made the golden calf, the angel of death was put back in business, and death again was reintroduced into the world. So we see the severity of impatience. What was the antidote? What was the cure? for this impatience. So, what we see in the beginning of the world, when Adam was created, everything happened instantaneously. He had relations with his wife, immediately there was a child. Everything happened right away. The cure was to learn patience. All of a sudden now, nine months. Even though you'd like to have that child instantly, why wait? God says, no, you need to learn patience. So a child is born, for the most part, after nine months of pregnancy. When the Jews sinned at Mount Sinai and made the golden calf, what was the antidote? What was the cure? Their sin was impatience. So Moshe came down with a command from God, make for me a tabernacle so I can dwell in it. God wanted a dwelling place a house in this world, a place for him to reside. And that would show that God had forgiven them for the sin of the golden calf. And the Jews were excited. They were thrilled that God was giving them this opportunity to repent. And immediately, after Moshe Benu told them what was needed, within two days, everything they needed to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, was donated. First time a charity drive, maybe the last, where they said enough. And within those two days, they began within, that's the beginning of uh, Sukkot, they began to build the Mishkan, and they built it within three months. And on the 25th day of Kislev, they were finished. And they tried to put it up, and they couldn't. And they went to Moshe, and they said, Moshe, our teacher, we can't put up the Mishkan. And he says, God doesn't want to put up. He wants you to wait. And they waited three months until the first of Nisan, and then the tabernacle was erected permanently, even though it was, t it was portable. But that's when it was put into use. What was that about? God was teaching them patience. And the real key to life is that imp impatience is a negative trait, and patience is a necessity for success. What makes a person successful? I mean, we all want to be successful. So, is it IQ? The answer is no. There are many people with high IQs that are failures. Gifted. Even then, there are people that are very gifted that don't know how to use it. What's the real key to success then? And the answer is perseverance. 
staying the course, patience, continuing to do what you need to do. Even when it looks like you're failing, just stay the course. Henry Ford failed, went bankrupt five times. Hershey of Hershey, Pennsylvania went bankrupt five times. Perseverance, not accepting no for an answer. Just staying the course. You know, this is why we lose and the devil always wins. Tortoise and the hare. We're sprinters, the devil, the eight Sahara, is a marathon runner. We run quickly and then we relax or run out of gas. He just keeps coming day after day after day and doesn't give up. Perseverance, the patience to stay and do what he has to do, not becoming impatient of why hasn't it finished, why haven't I got there yet. You know, they tell a story of a king who wanted to conquer a city. And he sent his commandos against the gate of the city. And they were killed out to the man. And then he sent his cavalry. And again, they were killed out to the man. Then he sent his infantry against the gate of the city. And again, they too were wiped out. Nobody left again. He sent his bottle washers, his, his supply troops, cooks, they attacked the gate of the city, and this gate of the city fell. And the king, rather the general who was in charge of the army, went to see the king, expecting the king to be elated. He had conquered the city. And the king was anything but elated. He seemed very removed. He seemed almost unhappy. And the general said, what's the problem? You should be thrilled. You've achieved your goal. And the king says, but I'm confused. Are you going to tell me that my cooks and bottle washers, my supply troops were the best troops I had? And the general smiled and said, no. The commandos did their job. The infantry did their job. The cavalry did their job. The Girl Scouts could have won. The gate was ready to fall. It took one more bit of effort to persevere, to stay the course, and just push one more time. And so many times in life, we're just there. And then we give up. We become impatient. And the truth is we don't have the right to be impatient. This world is a world of action. We just need to keep doing what we're doing if we're on the right course. And the Torah, that instruction manual, tells us what to do. And as long as we follow those instructions, the end result will be that the gate will fall and we'll be successful. Everything today is instant. Instant coffee. Medicine, we want to take a pill and feel good right away. In fact, even why do people take drugs? Because they want instant happiness, instant gratification. They don't want to work on becoming happy and doing what it takes to get true happiness. They'll take that superficial happiness because they can have it instantaneously. You swallow a pill, you shoot yourself up, whatever it might be, smoke something. And the real key to patience versus impatience, patience is evolution. Impatience is revolution. And revolution never works. Evolution is something that moves along and you don't even realize how you're changing and you're changing other people. And it works so well. You know, there was an experiment done at Sanford University called the Marshmallow Experiment. In this experiment, they took young children around the age of five. And an, an interviewer sat with the child. Each child was there by themselves. And they put a marshmallow down on the table and told the child, I'm going to walk out of the room. I'll be gone for a short period of time. And this marshmallow is for you. If you eat it now, great, no problem. But if you wait till I come back, I'll give you two. And they tested a group of children. Not sure exactly how many, but it was a number of them. And years later, when these same children took their SATs to get into college, every child that waited to have two marshmallows 
scored 200 points higher on their SATs. Patience. And the truth of the matter is that we as parents, our job, a child is born impatient. A child wants everything now. I used to take my son out for dinner back in the days when we weren't religious. <laughs> they ate out a lot. And I mean, he wanted the food now, and when he was done, we were leaving. <laughs> it was all instantaneous. I mean, he thought they had the stuff in can, just open it up and give it to him. But that's what children do. And our job is to teach people to be able to live within a society and be patient. That you can't do what you want to do all the time. That you have to be patient and let things happen. It's probably one of the biggest problems in marriage. As we know, A's marry B's. So many times one of the spouses, one is patient, or better yet, one is slow. And the other one is impatient and is faster. And the, because that, this impatient turns into arguments because the person who is waiting wants to know why they're waiting all the time. And the other person doesn't understand what the big deal it is. And they keep banging into each other. And this becomes a problem in marriage and in friendship. Someone being late all the time. It's interesting, though. I think with a friend, many times you accept it. That's why friends work out so well. We accept people with their personalities. And they accept you. In fact, the truth is, in marriage, you should be friends before you become anything else. Probably have a better marriage. But it's interesting. My wife and I are totally different. I want to do everything quickly. She takes her time. And she takes the credit for everything that I've learned because I listened to a tape one day and there was a great rabbi who was speaking and he said, while you're waiting for your wife, instead of complaining, open up a book, study something. Why waste the time? So instead of complaining, get smarter. And if you get smarter, you'll get happier. And you'll learn that which God wants us to know. And that is to be patient, to let things happen, because the truth of the matter is it's interesting. There's a saying that says that in the end, everything will be good, which means if it's not good, it's not the end. So that means just be patient. Give it a chance to hatch. Give it a chance to develop. Give it a chance to be where it needs to be. And the reward for that patience will be overwhelming success, a better relationship with everyone, your spouse included, and less pressure on you. Because people who get upset with impatience, it really, it's something that wears on them. And that's, that's the problem with all negativity. The person who is most affected by it is you. And many times we can't say anything. So what we do is we bubble inside because we can't let it out. We know it's something we shouldn't do. So we percolate. And the other person doesn't even know it may come out in other ways. A lot of times when a person gets angry at you, it's for something trite. And you wonder why. The truth is they've been building this all up. And then something, the straw that breaks the camel's back, and then they snap. And it doesn't make sense, and there's nothing to correct because it's everything else. The truth is we need to train ourselves to look at things in a positive way, to use that time properly and to know that impatience brought death to the world twice. And if it brought death to the world twice, it's for us to learn through this instruction manual that it is really a negative, that we should all be more patient. And the truth is on the other side. People should be more considerate and try to be more on time. But there needs to be a coming together of the two. Everyone needs to grow. And when that happens, then we both grow on both ends. You know, it's not like chemistry. Two, neg two, two, two wrongs do not make a right. Not like two negatives that make a positive. The truth is if someone does something wrong, doesn't mean that you do something wrong and that makes it better. Just the opposite. They do something wrong, do something right. And you'd be amazed at how that will change everything. So instead of impatient, work on being patient and see the results that it brings you. Thank you for coming. God bless, and have a great Shabbos.